first time I realized. That's what Sam means first. Oh. Yeah. I'm Timmy from Northwest. I'm Indra from Northwest. I'm Sasha from Northwest, and this. Hey. Is it. Hey. And this is our poem, Self Doubt. The first time I realized I wanted to die, I could count my age on one hand. I couldn't comprehend or grasp the logic behind our relation to one another. The grief and the suffer, so unnecessary, like a dream haunting an unconscious body, whose contents I search for but can't find. That's cool. Speaking of search, I got a question for you and for you only. When I talk, why do you listen? You're the only person that I know that listens to me and doesn't make fun of me for me for messing up my words or sentences. Like I can say whatever and you'll still listen to me, no matter what I no matter what it is. I know that I can be a lot and I'm not really an easy person to talk to, but I gotta say thank you for being there and listening when I thought no one would. I know that you're me and I'm talking to myself, but thank you. You're probably asking why I'm thanking myself. I'm thanking myself because I don't have a good relationship with my mom. That's why I wrote this letter. Dear mom, I wish you could see how much I want to spend time with you, but instead you enjoy your time with your friends. May I be imp not important to you or am I invisible or just a figment of your imagination? Not, I'm not here to be childish or self-centered, and I'm not trying to compare myself to you or your friends, but it's like you don't care about me. My father has been there every time I was emotionally abused by you, Mom. I just wish you could get a glimpse of how I feel. The, in, um, the inside. When I call you, when I call, when you call me lazy or slow or female dog and other things, it's sad and it feels like you don't love me. I still want you to do more, and I still want to do mother and daughter stuff with you, with you, but you're running out of time. Am I a? I'm a mother too, but with your first grandson, and you still treat me. You still treat me like I'm not your daughter. I guess I see you, I guess you see me as a roommate and someone who lives with you and not your daughter, and that's, that hurts. Oh, okay. This is why I talk to myself. It's because I feel like sometimes I got no one else to talk to talk to, but you know, I'm getting older by the minute, and I got my friends and all, but I just feel like if I talk to them about my problems, it feels like I'm bothering them, and I can't talk to my mom about it, because I already know what she's going to say. How come you feel this way? Don't we love you? Don't we take, don't, don't we take you out to restaurants? Don't we buy you things? Yeah, I know you do all that, but whenever we argue, it's like you don't want to hear what I have to say. You only want to hear what you want to hear. And it gets irritating, but that that's why I write stories, play video games, or edit movie clips, or mostly stay quiet, because I don't want to feel like a burden to my friends or, or the people I meet along the way, or my family for that matter. And I would talk to my dad about it, but I don't know him, so you know, it's whatever. And all I got was a phone call from him, and even then he didn't even say I love you, so I guess that's okay. Oh, it's your <laughs> Mom, I know you're not well, and that's okay, but I hope you can help yourself one day. Before I start my own family, I, I say this already, but I'll say this again. You're running out of time. An escape won't change it, won't phase or distract from the remains of human connection. This will only prolong the inevitable. So I ask now, in relation to all of reality, what exactly are we running from? What is so terrifying that we must waste our lives running through an abyss with an unlit candle in our right hand and a match in our left? What are we so afraid of? Woo!